Hi, I'm hoping to help with the 1099 filing process. I wanted to make a quick video that demonstrated how you can gather the information from QuickBooks Desktop, kind of review your vendors to see whether you have the responsibility of, of filing for 1099s or not. So what we're going to do, we're going to jump into QuickBooks Desktop here, as you can see, and we will real quickly kind of go through the process. So. The assumption here is you've gone through the whole year, you've got all of your, you've made your vendor payments, you've done, you know, all of your expenses and transactions throughout the entire year. And the assumption will be that the vendors have been marked already for which ones should be considered for 1099 and that all of the expenses have been categorized and have the proper names on there, of course. Once that's done, then the they actually have a great little setup wizard right inside of QuickBooks Desktop that will help you kind of go step by step. That can be accessed by going in to your vendor section, go to print e-file 1099s, and then you're going to go to the 1099 wizard. So with the 1099 wizard, it'll give you the pop-up as you're seeing. You can just kind of click on get started. What I've done is I went in and I created a couple vendors and you know put some accounts for expenses so we could doc, you know, populate some details in here. But this is actually gonna show you a list of all of your vendors. The way this comes about to determine whether or not they should be checked off here at first has to do with your actual vendor list. So if I go to Vendor Center, I can come in and I could choose like Clark Kent. If I right click and edit vendor with a left click, you'll see that under the tax settings, you have the option to check somebody off as vendor eligible for 1099s. Um, you, of course, will need to have either their social number or their EIN for the next steps for documentation. Uh, of course, you're going to have a lot of different vendors like 76 Gas that do not need to have that 1099. So stepping back here again, we'll go to the wizard and you can see we've got specific ones checked off here. So I'm gonna go continue. Once I hit continue, it's going to pull up a new page that's going to have all the information necessary listed out so you can fill in the different blanks. So if you had wrong information or missing information, you could come right into here and do add it in very easily. Make sure you've got, of course, the company name, first, last name, address. Um, and if you're doing some out of state work, there's a couple states you may have to actually have the state number there as well. So you'd want to reference that yourself. Once you've got all the details there, click continue again. And at this point, this is an area that it's really important to actually, you're going to want to consult your accounting or your tax professional because you need to map whatever chart accounts that you have to the actual proper tax line capabilities um, uh, to for when you're reporting like the 1099 miss. Uh, so these are the different boxes where the values would be reported to. So for subcontractor, you know, where would that go to? If we had rent, we would put rent to, you know, rent, so forth. Uh, so this really is an important part to make sure you do it correctly. Um, once you feel you've got everything mapped up correctly, you can also uh, just reconfirm by clicking your thresholds here to kind of see where the details are. But once you've got everything mapped up correctly, continue to the next part. And now this is where you need to start to review the payments that should be included or excluded. Uh, areas of ex things that need to be excluded have to do with like anybody that was paid with credit cards. So credit cards, the merchant processing will automatically send them uh, the 1099 from their earnings. But if you've been writing checks to people and so forth, that's the stuff for sure that you're gonna wanna make sure was included. So we'll go view included payments. And this would be a breakdown of all of the different transactions that we put into here. Ones that would be excluded these are ones that always pop up when it says um, like credit card or debit or ACH, um, you know, something of the, that nature. Those would be payments that are excluded from being reported. And that's so the person doesn't get double reported. But continue again. Uh, that's assuming we've approved all the payments that are in there. And now you start to get to the part where you're seeing the information, person's name, tax ID, the actual compensation amounts, total amount to be included because you could have had uh, a check that was written for $650. And if uh, 300 of it was not to be included, it's gonna change your need for reporting and how, how they get taxed onto it. Um, 
So you just kind of evaluate and make sure everything looks correct here. This should be pretty automatic. And then you'd go continue again. At this point, now you can go through and you can choose whether you want to do the electronic filing or you want to go and print the 1099s and send them out. Thanks for watching our video today. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them down below. And if you like this video, hit that subscribe button so we know and we'll keep making more content just like this. And as always, here's wishing you a very successful week.